balancing flywheels is a dangerous activity if it's not done correctly uh, to you and other people. So if you follow this method, um, I can't be in control of what you're doing and I can't be, therefore I can't be held responsible for um, any uh, accidents or whatever that happens from this. So you do this at your own risk. Morning all, this video is about balancing flywheels. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this, uh, one of which is you use uh, the services of a machine shop who has a proper dynamic balancer. Uh, and another way you can do it is the way I've been doing it for the last 30 years, which is uh, static balance. Um, so it's perfectly possible to static balance a flywheel for a classic mini, uh, purely because the flywheel itself is not long like a crankshaft. So the crankshaft, a long item, can be out of balance uh, in a number of places along the length of the crankshaft. Um, whereas the flywheel, uh, being larger in diameter than it is long, uh, the balance planes are actually much closer together, so it responds well to um, actually being able to statically balance. Uh, so much so that, uh, as I say, I've been doing it for 30 years and I've had a lot of feedback to say how smooth the engines run. So um, I would, Listen to what I've got to say, but make up your own mind as to what you want to do regarding balancing. So this method that I'm going to show you here works for me. So up on the bench today, I've got three flywheels. Now these might seem familiar because there are some video, uh, some videos already uh, that I've already done, um, including uh, how I've put these together. But uh, I've got three units this morning. Um, I've got two steel billet road flywheels. Um, and I've also got a cast iron lightened version uh, of a Verto flywheel. All right, so uh, we'll do these three um, and then I'll, I'll do some video shooting of these and then you can see what I do to actually bring these into balance. Up until fairly recently, I used to use um, a knife edge balancer. Now these are uh, uh, a normal piece of kit in a machine shop. Uh, these are used for balancing grinding wheels. Uh, and they consist of a, a nice sturdy uh, cast iron body. Um, they've got movable side protectors um, and they, they enable you to put the mandrel on and then lower it gently onto the knife edge. Obviously these are precision knife edges so that they're, they're ground perfectly flat and they're nice and free from blemishes. In use they do get damaged so this, this particular unit has had one regrind which I had done when I first got it uh, and it's served me well ever since. And then uh, to, in order to use that you need to be able to level it. Okay so that's the levelling platform that goes with that uh, with the, the little uh, bubble in the front or in the top. And that enables you to set this up nice and level so when you put your flywheel on or your item to balance it won't roll off one end uh, it has to be perfectly uh, level to be able to be used accurately now this one served me uh, for for almost 30 years and say so last year i changed this to a four wheel balancing uh, uh, unit which we'll cover in a minute uh, the other thing you'll need is a mandrel now this one i i, I made two uh, about 30 years ago uh, and this is the second one I sold one uh, a while back or oh, many years ago now um, and uh, this particular one has had a couple of uh, well that's had one major regrind because uh, they, they do wear they get marks on and it gets polished so uh, if you if you bang this down too hard on the knife edges there's such a small contact it will damage it so this is only made out of stainless steel it's not hardened um, so one of the future things I intend to do is to make up some uh, replacements out of uh, 17.4 uh, H1025. So I've got a billet of it right here, which I'm, uh, I've started making, um, and I've just got to finish off. In fact, I'm going to make I'll make a batch of five, and I'll have some available if anybody's interested. But that won't be for a while. Anyway, this system, uh, surprisingly enough, works very well. So the system I use now is this four wheel balancer uh, and this is typically um, used for balancing um, again grinding wheels um, and you can get very precision versions of these from uh, companies like old companies like Jones and Shipman used to make them. They are very expensive if you buy uh, a precision grinding wheel one but very very nice to use and very very accurate. Uh, this is a, a lesser model this is the sort of thing that was um, 
uh, prevalent in uh, motorcycle shops for balancing wheels and things like that. Um, and some people use them for balancing, you know, small engine crankshafts and, and, and various bits and pieces. But I've changed over to this. I bought this second hand, had it about a year, and it's a fantastic piece of kit. You don't need to level this. So you just put it on, put it on the bench and uh, put your flywheel on the mandrel and then place that on there nice and gently. And then it will find its own, find its own um, heavy spot. Anyway, let's get on to balancing and I'll explain what's going on and what you need to do. So the first thing to do is to mount the uh, mandrel into the flywheel and you do that by uh, insert, making sure it's clean and obviously inserting it in and you give it a very gentle tap, okay? Don't hit it too hard because you'll damage the, uh, the mandrel. This is just a tap to set it into the taper, okay? <clears throat> and then obviously you place it on the balancing jig nice and gently so you don't put any damage on the wheels or on the, the mandrel. And then once it's on there, um, you might want to, depending on how good your mandrel is and how, how the tapers match, um, what I tend to do is to put put it in a couple of times to get the average uh, the average point. Now, in this case, I've put it in twice and it's both come up. Uh, see the chalk mark there? It's both come up with a heavy heavy spot in the same place every time I've mounted it. So that's a good indication and that that's, uh, you know, a, a good mount. If it was every time you put it in, it was in a different place, then you need to look carefully at your mandrel and how it's mounting because that's an indication that you've got error, okay? So use a piece of chalk to mark the heavy point, which is what I've done. Once you've done that, you've got a reference and then you can let it go and you can see that flywheel is falling that side. And if we put it there and then let it go, you can see that it falls that side. So we know where the heavy spot of that is. And if we put it at the bottom, it doesn't fall anywhere. So the idea now is to drill out metal until that flywheel will stop in any position. For drilling purposes, I used to set these up in my pillar drill, but actually I found it was actually quicker to just uh, um, mark the area that I needed to drill, uh, scribe uh, a line, a centre line for the drill holes with a with a divider, and then just simply use um, a cordless drill. Uh, and here I use my uh, Milwaukee M12 fuel, uh, and this time I'm using a five mil bit, um, and it allows me to drill holes quickly and simply. And, and uh, accurate enough for what I need here. Um, and then I can drill a series of holes to get the weight out as needed. So start off with the center point. You can see there the chalk mark vaguely. That's, that's right in the middle. And then I'll drill out either side of that until we're in balance. So as you drill, uh, you need to regularly keep checking on your progress. As you can see, I've drilled uh, quite a few holes there now. Uh, and uh, I'm doing a few holes and then obviously bringing it back to the jig and keep checking it. So let's see how we're doing. As you can see, that's still falling. We bring it round to the other side. And it's still falling. So we've got a little bit more to go yet before we get it right. So after two more holes added, let's see what we got. That's there. A tiny bit more. So we're finally finished off in that position. So I just had to do two part holes, one there and one at the end. And then we've actually got something that uh, balances out. Okay. So that's ready to uh, move on to the next point, next point now, which is to put the back plate on and then we'll balance that. So what I've done now is I've assembled the flywheel. Uh, it's got its cover on, uh, the bolts are in and tight, um, and the back plate's obviously on. Uh, having already centred that, then uh, what we've now got is the residual balance of the rest of the mechanism. So that's the heavy spot. I've already marked it. 
and you can see when I let that go, that's falling down. We go to the other side, let that go, and that falls down that side. So now we need to drill that back plate into balance. The other thing is you'll notice is I don't fit the friction disc when balancing purely because the friction disc is free to uh, rotate on the primary gear and it's actually not part of the uh, the clutch uh, or the flywheel assembly in terms of being locked together. Uh, it's actually rotating around the axis of the primary gear which has quite a large clearance on it. Um, as it's a small part, um, I class it as uh, insignificant so um, I don't balance it. So on this one, I've drilled, uh, I've changed to a bigger drill, um, and I've drilled three holes. And you can see now, that it's responding much more slowly. So we're getting quite close now to the balance point. So we just put it the other side, just make sure it's responding evenly. And you can see, very slowly. So we need to be very careful now that we don't, don't drill too far past that point. Okay, so I've drilled two more part holes, so they're not the full depth. As we can see, I've now got balance. So that's now balanced. One of the other advantages of using a four wheel balancer is you can spin your flywheel. And then you can see if it's all going around concentrically or if there's any wobble. And this one's, this one's pretty good actually. Uh, some are worse than others and some are quite bad actually. But in this case, this one's going around nice and true, which is excellent. Right, second flywheel up. Um, and you can see this one's got slightly less holes to bring it into balance. So it, was a, it was a bit closer anyway. So... Uh, There we go, spot on. And the second side of the second flywheel. Um, so there we go, we can see that one's now in balance, which is, uh, which is excellent. Right, onto the Verto flywheel now. It's a little bit different. So what we do is we, we balance the pressure plate and then we uh, once that's into balance, we then um, uh, add the uh, flywheel um, to, the, to the back of it and then we balance that as well. So uh these are notorious for being out of balance and this one is no different so uh this isn't a brand new unit actually it's a it's a reconditioned one which i've done um but it's going to be balanced now and uh you can see how far they're out so the chalk line there is where it's out okay bring it up to the other side and you can see how far that one's out so that's actually to the point of being you know very 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 out of balance the other thing is people always say to me oh yeah but your mounting's not right and things like that if i just spin that you can see that that's not oscillating or out so the out of balance forces that we've got going on is purely the unit itself okay so you know i just need to stress that even putting these together standard, you're going to have a problem if you don't at least check the balance. So that would be terrible if it wasn't balanced. So let's get that into balance now. The Verto pressure plate is now drilled into balance. And as you can see, we've got some holes in there. Some of these are actually quite deep. So that's uh, they look like small holes, but they go nearly halfway through, you know, halfway down into that. So that was a long way out. Okay, so with the Verto, now we've got the uh, freshly lightened uh, flywheel assembly attached to the uh, diaphragm. And you can see from the chalk mark, that's the high spot, that's the, sorry, the heavy spot. And we just try that for balance. And we can see now that that's got a heavy spot there. So we're gonna drill that into balance And then that will be done. Okay, so we're drilled into balance. And this is a good a good um, example to show you actually what happens when you just over drill. 
as you can see i've got the holes here to get it in and actually that's a little bit too much so i just had to drill an extra one in the in the new heavy spot which was uh, just a tiny a tiny check to bring it back into balance but as you can see that now is happy all right excellent and one of the last things i do is to number the bolts so they only go back in in the same place that way we can make sure that uh, the uh, the balance is maintained I also do the same with the uh, bolts in the Preverto flywheel so that again they always go back in the same place well I hope you enjoyed that video on balancing I'll just end up uh, the video and just say look if you're um, you know doing any kind of competition work uh, spend the money and have that crankshaft and flywheel and front pulley all balanced together on a dynamic machine however if you just have your flywheel and you're doing road work, then the static balance is uh, perfectly ideal uh, and has served me and many traders that I do these for for very many years. Anyway, hopefully you got something useful out of that. Um, I will uh, see you soon on another video. Thank you very much.